Welcome to More Than Renovating, a renovate and real estate podcast. Our founder, Belinda Smith, talks to industry experts to provide you with the knowledge and information you need to make renovating for love and profit your reality. Belinda will also chat to some of her Renovation Mastery members who are just everyday people doing extraordinary things, following their passions in the renovation and property space. So let's jump straight into the episode. Enjoy. Hi, everyone. I'm Belinda Smith from Renovate and Real Estate. And today's special guest on my podcast, More Than Renovating, is Kylie Walker. Welcome, Kylie. Thank you, Belinda. Great to be here. Kylie and I know each other pretty well, so we're we're a little bit casual during this talk It's because we do know each other pretty well, and that's why I really wanted to bring her on today. Kylie does personal coaching. She does one-on-one coaching. She's, She's known as Kylie the Coach. Kylie is very, very comfortable in the property space. She just knows renovations, which is how we ended up meeting really is through our mutual love of property. But she also understands people and fear and what what are some of the reasons that some people move forward and what keeps um, people stuck sometimes. So, um, and she's brutal when it comes to accountability. So, (laughs) (laughs) So Kylie, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Belinda. I will get you to explain just a little bit about you and your business and how it all evolved. Okay, wonderful. So yes, I do have a shared love of property. About 20 years ago, I started buying properties and I was doing makeovers, little renovations back then and just buying property after property and adding value to those. And I really loved being in that space and adding wealth factor and obviously building my wealth through property along the way. Uh, And during that process, I started learning about property, learning that you could actually learn how to do property, (laughs) you know, how to do renovating or how to do property investing. And during along that path, I was introduced to the personal development side of things. So I've always been someone who has been very um, interested in personal development. I've always read self-help books ever since I think the first book I bought when I was 16 was a self-help book. So when I finally discovered um, coaching or personal development and coaching, I was so excited to finally find this thing that I'd been looking for that I didn't know I was looking for. So as I was achieving great successes with property and my property investment um, um, journey, I also had some significant setbacks with, you know, what was happening in the market at that time. And for those that have been around for a while, you remember the GFC. (laughs) And then it had some devastating effects on me. And at that point in time, I'd had some massive successes and I'd had some massive setbacks. And I decided that I needed to do something to get us out of a hole or get me out of a hole mentally and decided I would uh, explore coaching more. And that was really, really helpful for me from a mindset point of view and being able to have the tools to pick myself up and dust myself off after some massive financial setbacks. And then I realized how much I loved the space and I wanted to make my career uh, as a coach. And so from there, I started doing my coaching training in 2011. And from there, I've been consistently coaching and doing more coaching programs and personal development and have worked in various roles in property and coaching um, ever since then. And Kylie, you know, you were talking about the good and the bad. And I think that Mm -hmm. that's what makes you really relatable and makes you understand when you're talking to people who may not have had a perfect ride, makes you understand Mm -hmm. exactly what they're going through. Do you think it, it, it does make a difference? Absolutely. Um, I think if you're only someone who's only ever had setback uh, successes, (laughs) you don't understand what it feels like to go through devastating setbacks. And I can tell when I talk to people when they say, oh, yeah, I've had hard times too. You can kind of tell the depth of hard times people have had based on their responses to situations. So um, I feel like my lived experience of, as I said, great highs, been on stages talking about my results, then devastating setbacks where you don't want to talk to anyone and just want to hide in a hole and wish it would all go away and you know at times adopt that ostrich approach you know if you could put your head in the sand for long enough maybe all this hardness all this stuff is going to go away but I know that it doesn't and so I can connect with people and relate with people because I know what it's like to be in all stages of I guess the journey of life. And when I talk to people, when they're thinking about perhaps joining Renovation Mastery and, and we get together and we talk, not, not you and me, me and them, basically, mm-hmm. we talk about 
their journey right up to this date and what's making them very excited about property and renovating. All of the stuff comes up about things that have happened to them in their lives that have not gone particularly well or things that have gone particularly well. Like it all comes up. And I know that it has an impact on the way that people will move forward and their willingness to move forward. For example, if someone's had a business that's gone broke then they're beforehand, then they're just worried about spending money on anything or doing anything that's a little bit outside the box. How do you help people if they've had a setback like that? So it's really important for them to be aware of, I guess, the lens that they're looking at life through. So if you're looking at life through the lens of, past failure and past setbacks and fear your decision making is going to be so different if you were able to switch lenses and look through the lens of possibility and potential and not like rah rah hey my life can be amazing if I just do this thing if we're looking at life through the lens of possibility then our thinking our decision making is going to be so different so we need to know that our past does not equal our future so just because we've had setbacks in the past, just because we've had failures in the past, doesn't mean that's what we're going to experience again in the future. We just need to take the lessons from those experiences. And when we can, you know, I guess in a coaching session when I'm working with people, when I can talk to them about what did you gain from that experience? Like, what did you learn about yourself? What would you do differently moving forward? You can start to get some clarity on what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what your insights are. And that can empower you to then trust yourself to better make new decisions moving forward. Do you have a typical client, like a type? Hmm, yep. So I, I can think of one person in particular who represents a lot of people, actually. Yeah, yeah. Jane Doe. You know, uh, Jane Doe, yeah. <laughs> so in, in their 40s, um, having had successes, having had setbacks in the, in the past as well, um, knowing that they want to create a different future for themselves, having invested in themselves, but still stuck, like hitting brick wall, hitting brick wall, hitting brick wall. Why am I not moving forward? Um, and that person is what we touched on before, looking at themselves through the lens of their failures and setbacks in the past. So this person that I'm thinking of right now had, has achieved so many things and it's in the property space. So many projects, so many deals. I don't know anyone who was more experienced than that person, yet all he could focus on was all the things that didn't go right. And so when I shone the lens on, hey, can you just talk me through what you've done? I actually got him to write it down yeah. and said, okay, now I want you to write a bio. If you had to write this, these skills and experience about someone, um, you know, write it out as, as a bio. Yeah. And then when it came back in the next session, he was like, oh my gosh, I just cannot believe that I was writing about me. So my, the people that I work with, so, you know, they, they can't see who they truly are because they're looking at themselves through the lens of things that haven't got, gone well in the past. And whether it's property projects, relationships, business, health stuff, financial stuff, it's the whole, it all comes back to the same fundamentals. And how does that affect someone's self-talk? It's debilitating. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, the stories we tell ourselves are the most important things. It's like when you imagine that you're listen listening to a radio station. If you're tuned into self-doubt FM, <laughs> all you're going to be hearing is more self-doubt, more yeah. self-doubt. And you're just stacking more and more self-doubt. So what if you were to switch the dial on that radio station and tune into confidence FM or possibility or FM or I back myself FM? You could imagine how different the stories that you'll be hearing and, and our thoughts are real what you go no our thoughts are real and um our writing's real too i i know that there's been a few things um where we've sent you know messages back and forth and you're very very good about writing in a positive frame mm -hmm. uh, there are there are you know, we're faced with a message sometimes that we have to present somebody and there are ways that we can present that. Sometimes it can have a negative undertone, like we're like renovate, let's talk about topics, renovation mistakes, renovation disasters. And reframe those topics for me, Kylie, in the way that you always reframe things in a positive mm -hmm. mode. So we want to focus on the outcome that we want. Yeah. And we don't want to be using negative words. So if it's renovation mistakes, yeah. so you'd be um wording that as renovation successes yeah 
that's one thing that comes straight to mind for me. Yeah. So when we're focused on what we don't want, I know this sounds woo-woo, but we're attracting more of what we don't want and we're not getting the outcomes that we want. So if we if we focus on the on what we do want, we're going to be changing our language. So you're like renovation disasters or losing money, overcapitalizing. Mm-hmm. So how to have profitable deals. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, how to maximize the value on a property as opposed to um, how not to lose pro- money on a property project. Yeah. Or, exactly um, mm, yeah. Yeah. And, and so phrasing things in a positive way in our own mind and also talking to people in positive language helps, yep. helps what lift us, helps attract other people into our lives who are um, so, mm. more exciting to be with and more positive to be with and who are focused on successful and good outcomes. So when you think about it, you never really want to hang out with people that are negative and are always talking about the negative. So I know for me, I know I'm very aware of this because I'm very aware of language and energy and how I feel around people. Yes. But you want to be the person that is speaking positively and speaking in the way that you want things to be. So even when things are hard, you know, you can be living under the storm cloud or you could be looking for the silver lining in that storm cloud and it's what you're focusing on that matters. So you know, things are really challenging right now and I'm focusing on a solution. There is always a solution. I just have to find it rather than, oh my gosh, this is such a disaster and everything is insert all these really crappy words and crappy, crappy language. I don't even like saying it, <laughs> but it's reframing it to, you know, when the going gets tough, the best in me comes out and I will find a solution. In Those your, kinds of thoughts. Yep. Yeah. I, I, look, I'm with you hundred percent. In your coaching business, what have you come across that you didn't expect? in my coaching business personally for me or with clients? Oh, both. You, client, for me? business startup, what didn't you expect? <laughs> I didn't expect how resistant I would be to personal promotion. <laughs> <laughs> like podcasts. <laughs> People automatically think that, well, I think that they think this, right? This is my yeah. perception. But they think that you are automatically super confident you love public speaking you love being out there you love being a center of attention and you want everyone to look at you and to come and work with you so I want everyone to come and work with me but I would love it if it meant that I didn't have to do all this personal promotion for people to find me but no one's going to find the best kept secret like I'm not saying I'm the best kept secret right but no, <laughs> you know what I'm saying like yeah, yeah. And anyone who's building a business yes. and anyone who's doing anything and starting up anything you have to let people know what you're doing So I spent a whole lot of time building my skills, working with lots of people behind the scenes, like doing so much and building quality foundational skills and getting all the credibility that I felt that I needed, which is probably way more than, well, it is way more than I ever needed. But anyway, I've done all of these trainings and all of these things to be the best coach that I can be. And I realized after a while, and I think it was pointed out to me actually by a coach, was that I was avoiding leaning in and putting myself out there and really getting momentum in my business so so that for me um, I didn't realize how resistant I would be to that and there's a big gap between knowing what to do in your head yes and then actually implementing it when you bridge the gap of knowing and doing that's where you feel the discomfort and you have to feel that fear and do it anyway and walk over that bridge of discomfort so that you can truly achieve the results that you want I'm with you on that. I, I feel inside sh- quite shy a lot of the times. So like put me in a room with a whole bunch of people and I'm not the one running around saying hi and yet I can step into a leadership role when I really need to. But self-promotion is a different thing and I also am very conscious that I'm not 20 or an Instagrammer, you know, like where mm. I am in a different demographic. Um, so it's, it's, diff- it's different than I ever expected and it is a challenge anybody who's starting up in business who's watching this right now probably relates because I Mm. think part of your business you're right you can't sell a secret people need to know who you are and it's good when they do know who you are because conversations that you have with clients are different they're already I'll say warm to you in some some way like they already feel like they know you right even though Mm. you don't know anything about them the first time you've met them if they've watched you enough on YouTube and they've done bits and pieces they feel like they know you what's a a common myth about coaching I think a common myth is that it's 
rah rah and it's all just about being positive yeah that's true and putting yourself out there and being missed or missed the positivity when coaching is so much deeper than that like the value of like I, I think coaching is absolutely transformational I believe it it's been transformational in my life and people that I know and people that I've worked with so coaching is it's being able to help people become unstuck and move from where they are to where they want to be with non-judgment like judgment in a judgment-free zone yes. with non-bias and as coaches we can see the potential in our clients often when they can't see it yet so it's having the ability to see what clients can't see for themselves and supporting them to get those results so it's not just false positivity and rah-rah and building someone up and trying to motivate them it's actually supporting them to create true and deep and meaningful change within themselves so they can create sustainable change in their lives and they can do that quietly particularly if they're shy I <laughs> you'll love, <laughs> love this I got free tickets to a motivational weekend and so I couldn't go I would have gone I gave the tickets to my son and he really is shy he's a bit of an introvert and um, one of the first exercises he had to do in a room full of 100 people that he'd never met before was fly, pretend to fly around the room like an eagle. And he just crushed him for the whole weekend. He really struggled with that. So um, a lot of the rah-rah around coaching can be like that. But, and sometimes the loudness and the flamboyance doesn't necessarily get people results. It is getting people to move bit by bit, quietly, um, by themselves and get the results. And so the reason why some rooms or some trainers or some um, educators or whatever the word is for the per for that the room that he was in, the yeah. reason why they do that is to break people out of their state, out of their normal way of doing things, to try to shake them up and wake them up. And <laughs> that works for some people and other people just hate it and it completely puts them off. <laughs> nearly so it's broke really him. tricky. It really <laughs> broke him straight onto the plane and home. He was like, oh my goodness, mum. Thanks for the free tickets, mum. <laughs> what did you do, <laughs> mum? So, um, coaching yeah. and personal development and growth doesn't have to be all of that in your face and yeah. really challenging, hard stuff. Yeah. But, but being coached well means you will have challenging and hard conversations, but they're private. Yeah. And so you have that safe space where we work through the tough stuff and. You know, I have people talk to me and share things with me that they've never, ever told anyone else in their whole life. Yeah. And it just, it gives me goosebumps. And I feel so privileged when I've created, we've, been, we've created that level of trust in our relationship that people will share that stuff with me because that's the thing that's been holding them back. And then when we work through that and then we work through the, the next thing and the next thing, you can just see it's all these pieces and all these steps from there. And that's how they create absolutely transformational change in their lives. And the people that I've worked with that have had deep trauma or deep stuff that they've needed to talk through, where they're at now is so fulfilling and rewarding for me. Yeah. So a lot of the true work that we do as coaches is one-on-one, -on -one, personal, confidential. No one even needs to know what we talk about. Yeah. That's what creates true change. True change in other people and also just fulfillment and satisfaction to be able to help people at that level. That's, mm. that's different than send, sending them to a YouTube video to watch. Like it's totally different. And I always think about the ripple effect of change that creates. Yeah. The ripple effect in that person's life when they finally let go of a secret they've carried for 40 years. Yeah. Or they finally feel like they can breathe again because, oh, I've told someone my thing and they didn't react and they didn't react with a drama reaction or anything like that. And so I think about the ripple effect it has on that person and then the relationship with their partner or their intimate person and then the relationship with their kids and their family. And I just think often these conversations, like a coaching conversation can create all of these ripple effects and when they just keep rippling out, it's a positive change in the world. And so that's my little woo-woo bit on the end in that, yeah. um, you know, the positive ripple effect of having quality conversations that can change your life in little ways, bit by bit by bit, and also in big ways at times. What's your superpower? What is your personality trait that makes you good at this? Uh, I think it's my ability to connect with people and to relate to them. So I, I haven't had an easy life. <laughs> you know, when people talk about their upbringing or their past experiences, 
I can usually like what is it outrank them and I'm not that I ever <laughs> want to have a competition saying my life has been harder but you know people share a couple of things and most yeah. people are going oh and yeah. and I'm not saying that to go oh poor you kind of anything like that but because I think one of my superpowers is being able to have a positive outlook on life despite all of the stuff that I've been through and my my thinking or my intention without even realizing it but I've always been able to find the lessons and the learning and the growth from that and so then for me being able to do that personally I can support people to get different insights and a different way of looking at things that are happening for them in their world yeah how important is it for people to reach their little mini goals, like the accountability of keeping people on task. Let's let's call it oh that. Oh my gosh. It is so important because every time you don't keep a promise to yourself, yeah. you are destroying your self-confidence. Mm -hmm. Just piece by piece by piece. So if every single day you don't do something that you say you're going to do, imagine the 1% decline in how you feel about yourself. And that just gets deeper and deeper down to the pit of despair. Because eventually, if you don't take action and don't do the things that are important to you and you're complacent, oh, like just continuously complacent, you set these goals and there's all these things you want to achieve out of your life and then you just don't do the work that it takes and you don't step up and you don't keep the promises, it just, you just chip away at your self-esteem. You just get down and down and down into the depths of despair. <laughs> and I've worked with people that are down in the depths that like you feel like they're in the quicksand about to sink. and so. When you are being held accountable, whether you're being accountable to yourself or to a friend or a partner or accountable to a coach, which I think is better because you've, a coach has more leverage on you because you can kind of get annoyed with other people in your life and you know it can mess up relationships. Whereas with a coach where there's you are there, there for the purpose of growth, yes, being accountable for that and taking the actions you need to take are so important. The little things are the big things. Oh. So you take a little action, a little action, a little action. And, by, you know, what I was talking about, the 1% down into the depths of despair, just imagine the 1% elevation. Like every time you do something, you feel a bit better and you feel a bit better and you feel more confident and you start to feel proud of yourself. And you're like, oh my gosh, look what I've done. You start to do more. And then just you just end up feeling so much better about yourself. There's um, a Navy SEAL I listened to. I don't know why I'm listening to a Navy SEAL, but I did. He's, <laughs> he was just saying the importance of getting up every day, having a shower, putting clean clothes on and making your bed. He said, if you can just do those three things every day, if you're in that point of despair, even, you know, sending that message to yourself that you're up, you're active, it's worth it. You're setting that, you know, line in the sand. And now I'm going to start my day from a good position. That's helpful. Mm. And I agree. I always make my bed first thing in the morning when I get up. And I've heard it said that you you're, you're already mad, you automatically have a little mini win for the day. Like I just, if I've yeah. happened to have walked out of my room before I've made my bed and come back, it's like, oh my gosh. So it, it very rarely happens. Like 99% of the time it's done before I've even left the room. Yeah. Um, so I just know how important it is to have like our structure in our day, our little things that make us feel good. So I had you know, I've a year of health challenges last year and this year I'm feeling way better and I've really committed to looking after my physical body now that I know that I, I physically can. So I go for walks most morning up a, a mountain near me. Don't Like I'm not no mountain climber, but, you know, it's just 20 minutes up, 10 minutes down. And I feel amazing when I do that. And when I haven't, I just feel like I haven't set my day up well. So, you know, finding the things that you need to do for yourself to feel good that set your day up so it's little things like making your bed having a shower brushing your teeth um tidying up your space because our environment really impacts how we feel whether we would like to admit it or not we've got a tidy environment it feels like we have a tidier mind yes <laughs> and then um what are the other little things that you need to do that that make you feel good in the mornings and sets your day up well and set the routine and um mm. and just get them done just get through them and we can't let ourselves, uh, we can't ask ourselves if we feel like doing these things because yeah, most of the yeah. time you won't feel like it. Yeah, yeah. But you have to do it and not listen to your feelings because, of course, I'm a coach, right? I want you to tap into your emotions and to, you know, connect with your feelings and all of that, but not when it comes to getting things done that you have to do to be a responsible, functioning adult. 
Like if I don't feel like making my bed, I'm still going to make it anyway because it's just something that I do. It's important. If I don't feel like eating, I still will because I need to to, to maintain my energy levels. Like yes. there's just these things that we just can't let our feelings determine whether we do or don't do them or not. Um, and to that point, so many people uh, spend a lot of time getting ready to get ready to get ready. Like they they spend a lot of time trying to get into that feeling where they're okay to make that start. And I truly don't think that feeling actually arrives. I think you start first and then you just get you just keep going. <laughs> So if we use the metaphor of the ducks swimming in a pond, yes. if you're waiting to get all your ducks lined up in a row, you'll yeah. be waiting forever because yeah. have, ever, have you guys ever looked at ducks before and how often are they in a straight row? Like one will be moving and I know that they usually follow the mother duck, but it's always moving. Things are always moving and changing. So we can't wait to get our ducks lined up in a row before we take action because there will always be a new reason or a new excuse why you can't. And I know this because I've lived it. Yeah. And this is when you're faced with fears. So for me, I touched on it before, visibility stuff. You know, it's the stuff that I've done in the background and then having to do the personal promotion stuff. So then I've sought out help with my coach way back and started doing videos a few years ago. Yes. And I needed to do them when I wasn't ready because yeah. I never, ever would have been. Yes. And so I can talk to this me very too. congruently yeah. because I've been there. I've needed to be pushed at times. And I've also needed to push other people at times. And the feeling you get when you just finally take that action, and it, it's so fulfilling. And it's important to remember that imperfect implementation is way more important than perfect action any day. Because things are never going to be perfect. Perfection is in the eye of the beholder. There is no perfect. Yes. Like you may think um, that this thing is perfect and someone will look at it and go, oh, but could you change the colours? Or... I don't know about this. Could you do that? Or could you change it like that? So if you're waiting for something to be perfect, it's only your perception of it being perfect. So let's just get comfortable about imperfect implementation and getting better and improving things along the way. And creating that momentum. Mm. Is there anybody in particular that's had a significant influence in your life, a really important influence in your life and career? Pick me. No. <laughs> I actually was going to say that. <laughs> now all the listeners know we do know each other well. Pick me, Carly. <laughs> oh, you well, muted. Was... Muted? Oh, no, no, no. Oh. Let's see, just oh. Yeah. Um, this, this is actually true. Blinda did not pay me to say this. This is not. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with, there's two people, right? Yeah. So Tony Robbins has been very influential for me. I'm not saying I, I'm a Tony Robbins like fan. You know how a lot of people are just totally into Tony Robbins. I have complete and utter respect for him and I love what he has done because he pretty much, he's been referred to as the grandfather of coaching. Yes. So he's pretty much, I don't know, I don't know if you say created coaching, but he's been a frontier in the coaching space. And from that, the coaching industry has really grown and boomed as a result of his influence in the world I believe that's my oh, okay. my viewpoint no mine too he's got a big path for everybody else yeah to, yes and I know he can be rough and yeah I've been to his yeah. events and I've done the firewalk and I've loved it and I've also loved being led by softer trainers and coaches and things like that so there's he's opened up this whole world and there's all these different ways that you can be have your needs met in the coaching space now so I've got utmost respect to him and I guess the change, the, the leader that he has been to create the change that he has in the world to really um, have coaching take off and really become mainstream. When I started coaching in 2011, most people didn't know what a coach was. Mm -hmm. And now, 11 years later, 12 years later, everyone knows what a coach. So many people call themselves a coach, whether they're a coach or not. But, you know, coaches are, uh, is, it's pretty, pretty mainstream now. Yeah, that's so Tony Robbins. Yeah, and it is you, Belinda. Oh, really? That's so nice. Now I'm going to go from laughing to crying. Oh, <laughs> but I, I mean this because we have, you know, I've known you for a few years now. Yeah. And as a leader and as a business owner, you are so congruent with who you are. So who you are on screen and who you are off screen is the same person. And I actually really respect and admire that with you. You aren't someone who puts yourself on a pedestal and everyone follow me and. I'm amazing and I'm a guru and listen to what I say and all that kind of stuff. 
you lead naturally with complete authenticity and I really love that with that about you oh thank you I'll take I'll take that I think okay mm-hmm. so here's the thing that we both have in common we lead and we've landed in a coaching role both of us because we just want the best for other people like we mm. just want other people to experience a nice life a kind of life I don't know more fulfillment mm. which is fulfilling for us as well yeah so I know a lot of people are living in quiet desperation that was me for a long time like I knew there had to be a way out of the stuff that was going on for me and my stuckness and situations yeah and I have always been able to find that way and I've, I've been wired in that way that I can see my way out or find my way out no matter how hard it's been and I know that if I've been through this well plenty of other people are going through this because I'm pretty self-aware and I can read the room quite well I've always been able to tap into where I think people are at and once I started my coaching training and having the conversations that I have and people open up to me very openly very easily and quite deeply and I just love knowing that I can help support people to make a difference and if I can ease the pressure that they're feeling or ease the sense of like I said quiet desperation where you don't want to tell anyone how stuck you are you don't even know who to go to you don't want to go to a psych because things aren't that bad but you but it's not okay when you're not talking to someone so coaching and where I sit in the middle of that like things are okay but they're not great they're not super bad but I, I feel bad on the inside and I just need someone that I can connect to and get some clarity with where I'm at and some feedback so I had a session with one of my clients yesterday morning and he said I have a, a weekly session and he said I don't know why I need to talk to you every week because sometimes I think what am I even going to talk about but I always just say what's going on and blah blah blah, blah. and then you give me clarity of my thinking or you you ask me questions or you give me feedback on what I've just said and I'm always going away with a whoa I didn't see it in that way kind of takeaway and so that's what coaching is especially when you work with someone over the longer term I agree and um, you get feedback that is different than the feedback that would come from a spouse Mm, yes and there are some things that um, like I'll, I'll talk from a property perspective if there is a couple and one person of that couple is okay to move forward on property and is happy to go and, you know, purchase property and go to the bank and get loans and all that kind of stuff. And another person in that same relationship doesn't have that same level of, uh, let's call it bravery, or um, they feel like there's a higher risk or whatever's going on in their head. And that differential, people sometimes don't talk about it with each other. Mm, They don't know how to talk about it. No. They just end up getting annoyed or frustrated with one another and I've worked with lots of couples separately I don't do couples coaching together but I've worked with them separately and been able to shine the light on what they're not seeing because how we do the world how I do the world and how I'm wired is how is differently to every other person on the world in the, in, in the planet yeah and so in our relationships we can often expect that our partner is going to see things the same way that we do but they rarely do because often opposites attract so you actually are a great dynamic together and so where that one person is fearful of the risk that can ground the person who is a risk taker yes and so when we can start to understand and communicate well and work out what their motivator is or what their main fear is or what the driving force is behind their behavior then you can understand what's really going on and help them through that so I've spoken to lots of clients around because what's going on with my I'm thinking of a specific example recently in and she was property related stuff and he didn't know how to communicate with her anymore about this thing that was creating all this conflict yeah and I said so what else is going on in her world what else has got happening and when I heard the backstory of all the other pressure that she was under and what was going on that was the reason why they couldn't get on the same page about the property stuff because we needed they needed to talk through the other stuff. Then she could have the clarity of thinking to work through the property topic that they needed, but she just couldn't go there with the other stuff that was going on. So me being able to put give that person perspective, that partner perspective, yes, it's like, oh my gosh, now I understand why she doesn't ever want to talk about it at eight o'clock at night. Like it's the only time that I'm free and she's exhausted from 
the two-year-old and being pregnant kind of stuff like just adding those little things in and helping to understand where your partner's at and then also um i support people with how they can language or frame something to their partner so that it's heard differently that's a good point a lot of a lot of the butting of heads is because how one person is communicating and the other person is hearing it there's that mismatch and sometimes being able to have some feedback on what you're expressing and the way that it's coming across tweaking that and changing that can have a massive impact on the way the communication flows I really think that's your um your one of your superpowers Kylie it's just understanding the language and how it's received and how it's sent and and how we portray our feelings and how that impacts people around us in a positive way or a negative way. Mm. Mm. So what are your big plans? What's up? What's coming? What's coming? Uh, Building my personal client base. So I really, really love the work that I do. I absolutely love coaching. So this year I'm focusing on building my personal client base. I'm going to run some group coaching programs. And I'm also, this is me feeling the fear and doing it anyway, right? Because I yeah, said we spoke about these perceptions that people have of coaches and we like to put ourselves out there. And so I'm going to do some more speaking gigs this year and some more presenting and stuff like that. So I've right. just said it on this podcast, so there's my accountability. There you go. <laughs> Number one, tick that off. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Okay, let's tick it off today, can we? Yeah. yeah. Um, um, but yeah, so really focus on building, even the social media stuff that I've been doing. I like to be the quiet person that people just refer people to me and I'm I'm seeing that you know I just need to start building my brand so to speak and putting myself out there so that's what this this year ahead is for me. Highly the coach is taking things next level. Let's call it that. <laughs> totally. We're already out there <laughs> doing it. doing the coaching thing. Let's make you 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 might be famous. Might be all <laughs> <laughs> well do you know and how I would reframe that. So when we yeah. talk about language and I've yes. just done the whole oh, like yeah. I'm, like it makes me nervous. It does on some level. Yeah. So then I've just done a quick reframe. This is an example of what we we're talking about before. I know you're wrapping it up, so I just have to bring in another little lesson along no, the way. Go. Is I have just reframed it in my mind from to I get to create more positive ripples of change. And yeah. that excites me. So when yeah. I just did that slight shift in my thinking as I said that and as I acted that out, I'm like, hang on a minute. And this voice in my head says, no, it means that you can create greater ripples of change. Yes. And you can reach and that. More. You'll have greater reach. Yeah. And that is what matters to me. So one quality coaching conversation at a time can yes. create such positive ripples in the world. Thank you so much, um, Kylie. Where can people find you? Thank you, Blenna. You can find me at kyliethecoach.com. Kyliethecoach.com. <laughs> I like it. Um, a email address? Do you want to leave an email address? Yes. Yep. Kylie at kyliethecoach.com. That's very, very simple to remember. Thank you. Kyle. I decided that it would be so much easier if I just went a super, super simple business name because it's Kylie and people can sometimes have difficulty remembering surnames. So it's like, yeah. Kylie, what does she do? She's a coach. Okay, yeah. you just need to contact Kylie the coach. Boom, yeah. boom, easy. That's <laughs> it. What Kylie are you talking about? I'm talking about Kylie the coach. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> no, that's brilliant. All the best with your business. Um, guys, Kylie coaches... Um, men and women it's really just fabulous about I don't know helping people move through their blocks we've discussed a lot in the last podcast or the last hour and um, and I thoroughly recommend working with Kylie she's also a lady who does what she says she's going to do and she's heartfelt and you know comes from the the right place and uh, I know that she'll do very very well I'm going to see you we (laughs) might do this again in 2024 beautiful I can't wait (laughs) <laughs> then you will thank be thank you so much I was going to say you will be famous but I don't want you to have to reframe that <laughs> <laughs> not twice in the first in the one five minutes <laughs> um, oh, thank you so much Belinda thanks Kylie all the best mm-hmm.